What's up, guys? Gorley here, and welcome back to another episode of Studio Quest, the quest for a better studio. That's what uh, I made up last time off the top of my head, and now I'm committed to that for the rest of this little series. Basically, these videos are just about optimizing the studio setup and uh, just kind of documenting it as I'm going through it and kind of talking about what I'm going through. Last time, we talked about putting this Jasper's Key stand up to get everything off the desk and over there, and it's helped a lot. Um, but the next phase is creating more room in here, and the reason I don't have a lot of room in here is because of uh, because of these guys right here. Something I kind of wanted to reprioritize as I rearrange the studio and optimize it is to make it so it's more comfortable for artists, vocalists, and instrumentalists to come in here and work and collaborate and have like a comfortable place to sit and chill. But currently, it's not. there's not really any spot for them to kind of just sit and hang out other than on this stool here, which that's not super rad or comfy for long periods of time. And so to make room for a more comfortable environment, I need to make some space. And this Roland TD-11 drum kit and Octopad are really taking up a huge amount of real estate. So uh, I'm getting rid of them. So it's always been kind of a dream of mine since I was a kid to have some kind of drum set. Uh, I was never really in a situation to own an acoustic drum set because they're loud and it's hard to own one and not piss everybody around you off since you have a very specific space for that. So I was stoked uh, when I was able to buy this setup, but now that I'm into music production, uh, I'm using MIDI for almost everything and not really using you know the, the stock factory sounds built into the TD-11, which, and when you're working with MIDI, it really begs the question of whether these even become useful. Now, full disclosure, I'm not fronting on this drum set or any drum set for that matter. This is just sort of how drums have become useful to me and how, as I've gotten into music production, the way I drum and use drums has evolved from what I initially thought it was going to be. So something that kind of led to my decision to get rid of this stuff, uh, a lot of it has to do with form factor. I mean, the only reason that electronic drum kits are laid out like this is because they're modeling after acoustic drum kits. And the only reason acoustic drum kits are laid out like this is because they have size limitations, like toms are huge and need to be spaced out. Kick drums are giant and need to have room down below, and then cymbals just sort of scattered everywhere else accordingly. But because electronic drum sets, all they're doing is detecting which pad you're hitting and how hard you're hitting it, there's no reason to have this giant form factor anymore. Now, obviously, if you come from playing acoustic drums, you're just used to this, so why would you go to learning playing on, you know, something smaller like an octopad when you like this form factor? That's fine, makes sense. I'm not fronting that at all. But for me, I don't really need all these pads to be spaced out like this when I can drum on something smaller like this or even smaller like this. And something else that went into my consideration is appendages. So if you're using drumsticks, you got one drumstick in one hand, one in the other hand, you have one of your feet just doing kick and your other foot maybe on another kick pedal, but also just opening and closing the hi-hat. So you have four limbs, four appendages, and two of them are just on effectively one pad each. But when you're dealing with drumming on a MIDI controller with your fingers, you have 10 fingers. So you have 10 appendages so you can actually technically do a lot more drumming with this. And there are some finger drummers out there that do some absolutely wild shit where they're drumming a whole drum pattern, triggering samples, playing a whole song with just their fingers. You can, to an extent, do that with a drum set, you know, with sampling, having sampling pads like a Roland SPDX around, which we'll talk about that in a second, spoiler alert. But there's a lot you can do with just a MIDI controller and this form factor fits, I would say into most studios, a lot better than a big drum set, which is modeled after an acoustic kit. And also I've been getting a lot more into live performance streaming, and it's just a lot easier to kind of have everything at my fingertips here all in one spot than it is to have to like wrestle getting on and off of a stool to get access to my kick and hi-hat pedals and picking up drumsticks, putting them down. It's just a lot easier in the flow, just moving from one bar to the next and one pattern to the next, if I can just really quickly just drum patterns in on, you know, MIDI controllers. And despite being able to press more pads at one time on a MIDI controller, there are certain expressive elements that are harder to do on a MIDI controller that these are just still really useful for. And that's why even though I'm selling the Octopad and the TD-11, why I am keeping something special. For years now, I have had a Roland SPDS X sitting in my closet, just waiting for it to be called up to the big leagues. And uh, it finally has. 
So I bought this thing a while ago before I even got into messing with DAWs or music production or anything. And I'm usually pretty good about selling anything I haven't used in the last 18 months. Uh, this hasn't been used in years, but I didn't want to get rid of it because I knew that there was a future potential use for it and I wasn't sure when it was going to happen. And uh, now it's happened. So what's nice about this little guy is I can take this form factor and turn it into, into this form factor. I mean, how is this little setup not just super slick? I mean, look at how much space we saved here. You can still use drumsticks. Got a kick pedal. I mean, we have all the basics here that we need. I just don't see a reason for me anymore when I'm working with MIDI to have the huge drum set that takes up all the space when I can consolidate it with this thing. And when I don't want to use this, I can just take it off the mount, put it back in the closet, and it's totally out of the way. It's, it's just so tidy. It's just so cute and small. And you name another drum set I can do this with. Not to mention, it's also a sampling pad, so I can load up my own samples and have my own sample kits from my own sample library and take this with me anywhere. So if I want to go somewhere and drum live, I can do that and I can carry it and have my own sounds and that's just awesome. So adios to big, janky setups that don't need to be as big as they are and hello to this sleek, sexy little guy. And there is one point I wanted to emphasize about, uh, you know, electric drums versus uh, using just a MIDI controller with your fingers, and that's some of the expressiveness that you can get out of it. So there's pros and cons that way, each direction for each of these. And this is controlling MIDI directly through a drum rack in Ableton Live, and it applies to that scenario. So let's say you kind of wanted your drumstick to bounce on the snare after you hit it. It's really easy to do on a drum pad. getting that little bounce in there. But trying to do that on a MIDI controller is a lot harder. So velocity control is way easier on an e-drum. It's just easier to do expressive stuff like that with actual drumsticks. Anyway, that's enough for today's episode of Studio Quest. And uh, also building sound panels is something I have coming up. I'll probably have a video about how I'm making those because I'm making those by hand. So if you have any interest in seeing something like that, then uh, make sure to subscribe and press that bell so you're notified of when I do that. Very, very exciting stuff going on. And uh, you just go on having a splendid day. I want to be somebody else. I want to be somewhere else. So I gotta get out of here. Someone get me out of here. I don't know if I can stand I don't